This is Visitor's Book and I'm Maya, your host and a journalist from Finland. Like always, I'm going to be meeting with diplomats and foreigners who live here in Pakistan. And I'm going to find out what they really think about the country. So let's go. So today we're meeting with Nicole Wahid, a Polish-Australian entrepreneur and the owner of Lofology. So let's go see what she has to say. Hey Nicole. Hi Maya. Welcome to Lofology. Thank you. How Take are you? Seat. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. It's so busy here today, huh? It is. We have a lot of uh, people coming in for breakfast to Lofology. Right. It's, it's a very popular spot, huh? It is. So how long has Lofology been in operation now? So we started back in uh, December 2016. Mm -hmm. So it's been a bit over two years. And we have two locations so far in Islamabad. And we're looking okay. to expand uh, throughout Pakistan, like slowly, incrementally. Next city will be Lahore. Wow, that's so exciting. And um, how long have you been in Pakistan yourself? So me, I actually got married in Pakistan back in 2013. Whoa. So this is my seventh year now. Amazing. And how do you like it here so far? I think, you know, Pakistan's presented me with amazing opportunities that I wouldn't have otherwise had. Yeah. Uh, so I came from London as a corporate lawyer. Mm -hmm. And when I arrived in Pakistan, it was, uh, you know, kind of a green field. I could do anything and my husband's family supported me. Right. They said, whatever you want to do, just do something. So <laughs> I was looking around and, um, and I really, really missed the kind of bread that I grew up with, sourdough, long fermentation, and also European style foods, yeah. which went back to the basics. So no fondant cakes, no artificial preservatives, no excess sugar. Yeah. So one of the reasons was because Pakistan became my home, I couldn't keep on bringing bread back in my suitcase, Yeah. my husband and I. Um, so we decided, okay, we will start a bakery and I really wanted to start Lofology and that's how yeah. we kind of came to develop, develop the concept and thankfully, you know, it's been very successful and people have enjoyed um, coming and enjoying the food and experiencing something different. Yeah, so should we have some breakfast then? That's a great idea. Yeah? Yeah, let me okay. get a bit later. Good morning, thank you. Thank you. Amazing. So, I can recommend a few things if yeah, you would like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, we use uh, all organic eggs for all our omelettes and poached eggs. Wow. And we have things like bagels with smoked salmon, which are also very, very popular. Um, and the Lofology granola is my own homemade recipe. Seriously? Using uh, organic honey. Um, and we and we bake it on site. Pakistani honey, right? Pakistani honey wow. from the northern areas, yes. Um, but I'd recommend that you try our signature French toast. Yes. Strawberries are in season, and our brioche bread is very, very uh, popular, and it's amazing with French toast. I'm gonna go with that then. That sounds okay. absolutely delicious. Fantastic. And so, I'll have a coffee as well, I think, and then maybe some juice if yeah. you can recommend something. So being Australian, we take pride in good coffee. So I think you're right. Yeah. What, <laughs> what kind? What's your What's your coffee flavor? Um, like? So I'm from Finland, and I love black coffee. So. Okay. I'm so go. can we get a long black? Yeah. Madame. And also we have organic grapefruit juice. So we'll have an organic grapefruit wow. juice. Yes. And for myself, I'll get a latte and a cucumber mint infusion. And for breakfast for myself, I'll take a Lofology omelette with a slice of the keto bread. Thanks very much. Thank you. But yeah, the bread is really amazing here. Like I remember when I first came to Pakistan and Lofology didn't exist back then. That was like the one thing I really missed, like good European style bread. So I'm so glad you've started this. Thank you, you're not the only one. Yeah. It's actually one of the uh, great pleasures in running a business when people come in and they really enjoy what we do and it makes all of the effort and all the hard work and the long hours really worthwhile. Yeah. So course. with sourdough, you know, one of the beautiful things about sourdough is that crunchy crust, yeah. which you must must know. Um, and in Pakistan, that was something that wasn't available. Yeah. So uh, Pakistani bread, double roti, it tends to be soft and made with sugar. Mm. And it's also uh, made within two hours. Our bread takes 48 hours. That's 
that's amazing. And um, what about your clients? Are they mostly Pakistani or foreigners, or is it, it's like a mix? So you, having been here in Islamabad for so long, would probably have noticed the transition. When we started uh, back in 2016, 2017, I would have said it was 80% foreigners who would come in and it, you could have been anywhere else in the world. And my husband, who's Pakistani, actually came in and said, are we even in Pakistan? Ah, the drinks. Yes. Yeah. Um, and now, as we have, uh, you know, uh, kind of developed and our names become, uh, I guess, more famous in the market, we have a lot more Pakistanis. Okay. And I find that also the Pakistanis um, enjoy the kind of big open windows and the, the green that looks, you know, you have that inside outside feel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and a lot of the foreigners go to our diplomatic enclave branch. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. You have one there as well. And um, so, what do you do? You enjoy Pakistani food yourself then at all? <laughs> or this is <laughs> like it's a very good question. No, I absolutely this is yours, I, right? <laughs> yes, it is. Thank you. We need to switch. Thank you. Um, yeah. I love Pakistani food. Mm -hmm. uh, so halva puri. Mm -hmm. If I'm going for a breakfast, yeah. um, that's amazing. So I love the mix between semolina, which is the sweet, and then the spicy chane with the puri. Yeah. That's that's an all-time favorite for breakfast. Mm -hmm. um, and then if we're cooking at home, I love black dal, so kali dal or kuchnar, um, alu cutlass and pool gobi and all of these kind of things. But we tend not to eat too spicy food yeah. um, and with less desi ghee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit modified Pakistani from my husband's Pakistani family's yeah. kind of traditional way of cooking. So they that's what they like and I really like that kind of food. Oh. Um, but then I also like European style food. Yeah, so yeah. we all, you know, he, my husband spent a lot of time growing up overseas. Okay. So he's used to also European food. So we like sure. to, to mix, mix the two, yeah. Um, so did you meet your husband here in Pakistan or, or back in, in, in the West? I met him in London, actually. I was work, working as a corporate lawyer. So this is completely something completely different to what I usually do. Um, I never, you know, imagined that I would own a, a bakery cafe right. and, <laughs> and hospitality businesses. Yeah. Um, and when he met me, I was a corporate lawyer. Uh, mm -hmm. He was an engineer, and he was visiting London because he'd studied there. So he was visiting some friends, and we managed to meet through a mutual friend. Okay. Um, and then he would, you know, kind of visit London. We'd meet up, chat, yeah. and then he suggested, you know, why don't I? come and visit Pakistan, see what it's like. What was your reaction? What did you think about um, Pakistan back then? You know, I actually had no idea what it would be like. I didn't really have any preconceived ideas, but I had no idea about the country mm. at all. Um, like no negative views, no, no, no positive, no, no, nothing neutral. Um, actually, what I knew, because I'm an Australian, uh, I knew about cricket and I knew yeah. about Imran Khan. And this was largely what my view of Pakistan was based on. It was based on cricket. Um, so when I came here, uh, I thought, you know, it's so surprisingly green. And people were so friendly and they continue to be. So even seven years in, I still have Pakistanis come and welcome me to the country, shake my hand, right, yeah. welcome to Pakistan, how are you enjoying it? <laughs> I'm now a Pakistani, but thank yeah. you very much for oh, that's so cute. You know, the welcome. <laughs> so you know, that's, that's really nice. And I find that Pakistanis are super friendly people. Mm, so it makes really it easy to make your home. You know, you don't feel like such an outsider. They're very welcoming. Um, you know, they'll invite you to dinners exactly, or yeah. lunches and really try to go out of their way to make you make sure you have a, a, a lovely experience yeah. um, in this country. Oh, that's so, great. And what about the Pakistani family system? Did you have any trouble adjusting to that? Because that, that is very different from what we've grown yes, up Yes, right? that's, that's true. Um, I think a lot of... Uh, international you would say um, women would say my family is atypical yeah. because they're very uh, liberal and open-minded in the point that they are very happy for me to live a very independent life okay. yeah. so uh, my mother-in-law and father-in-law were very happy for me to run businesses um, it's a very entrepreneurial family so their expectation was I would do something and I feel you know, a, a great deal of pride and satisfaction because I feel like I can contribute to Pakistani 
uh, society and the country and you know I employ a lot of people, I pay taxes and I'm also imparting my experience and knowledge and I think they believed in the value of that so they were very very happy for me to pursue what I was interested in which is a little bit unusual yeah. uh, and also the, the families you know everyone does their own thing so there are lots of entrepreneurs so they're all off doing their own thing um, we do live with my mother-in-law mm -hmm. in Lahore yeah. uh, but apart from that uh, you know she's she's very independent and uh, my husband and I travel and, and do our own things. He runs his own businesses, yeah. I run mine. Yeah. So uh, I think it's a bit of an atypical yeah. family situation, but uh, having said that, the support I got from actually being able to move into already a family where we have cousins, where we yeah. live, so we play badminton together. If I have any questions, you know, if I want someone to go shopping with or you know um, go walking with there's always someone around within the family so even if I didn't have any friends which at the beginning I didn't um, there was always the family to be there to support me and my mother-in-law invited me to parties and uh, you know introduced me to the society so that was really obviously very helpful as well and what about like your experience running a business in Pakistan? What, what has that been like? Has it been very challenging for you? Yeah, that's a really good question. I, I think hospitality as an industry is very challenging. Mm. Um, there are, I guess there are general challenges that I think all hospitality entrepreneurs face, especially in restaurants. So, for example, the ad hoc changes to government policy mm -hmm. are a big stress factor. So, for example, they've changed the non-tariff um, import restrictions mm -hmm. of bringing edible food into Pakistan, which is you know, and they changed that overnight. Yeah. So that was that was very very frustrating. It's a big challenge. It's an ongoing challenge. Mm -hmm. And then also the search for talented people. So when people get trained or they have um, you know skills, then they want to leave the country, and that's really difficult yeah. because once you've trained someone and they're part of your team, they want to leave, and there's a huge brain drain yeah. in in this country. And it's a shame because I think. You know, Pakistan has so much to offer and there are so many opportunities. You just need to take those opportunities. But yeah, it's such an interesting mix of people here. Like there's people working on their laptops and like women and it's kind of like has this like, it's like a hipster. <laughs> it is, it's a bit of an eclectic mix of people, yeah. that's true. So we get people from all walks of life. Um, for example, you know, the diplomats, they come, yeah. politicians, as well as entrepreneurs, uh, startups. They come, you know, with their laptops and they have meetings here, um, as well as, you know, other just people in the community. So, the, you know, doctors and, and lots of different people. Oh, look at that. Um, food is here. So, yeah, I mean, we, we pride ourselves on kind of being welcoming to, to everyone. And also, I wanted a place where I would feel comfortable. Yeah. So that if, you know, you're sitting alone as a woman on exactly. a table, you know, no one's going to stare at you. No one's going to treat you like what's going on she doesn't have any friends yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> because overseas that's pretty normal to sit yeah. at a table by yourself yeah. and in Pakistan yeah. there's you know everyone has a huge family and they've got yeah, lots of friends exactly. and they're all hanging out and and it's not always the case for, for yeah. us yeah oh wow that looks delicious so this is the lofology omelette yes. and we've got our keto bread keto mm -hmm. almond bread Oh, and the signature French toast. Yummy. <laughs> You've come just in time. We've got uh, strawberries in season at the oh, moment. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. And how is the keto bread made? What is it made of? So the keto bread is made with almond flour mm -hmm. and uh, coconut oil, a little bit of coconut flour and eggs. So it's um, keto compliant and it's also really tasty as well as uh, being um, healthy, it will keep you full all day. So I find if I eat that at the beginning of the day, it yeah. can take me through to the late afternoon. Hmm. Wow, so let's try yeah. some. <laughs> this looks absolutely delicious. I hope you enjoy it. It's with our, uh, made with our signature brioche. Wow. So it's <laughs> light and fluffy. Um, Oh my god, this is so good. <laughs> Thank you. Love it. Mm. Wow. 
So we're a bit known a bit uh, of a, as a cult place for breakfast. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you can see like there's a lot going on, and you've got a, a very young vibe because my, my staff tend to be uh, younger, and we make sure that they're uh, interested in in recognizing our customers who are especially regular yeah. um, and they tend to know what they want and they'll suggest things also so when we have new things so we have a very seasonal menu yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll for example we'll bring in new pastries or new croissant or something like this and then the staff will mention especially to our regular guests we have this new on the menu because yeah. quite often people know what they love yeah, yeah and they yeah. will um, just keep on ordering those things. So we try and encourage people to branch out and maybe try new yeah. things as well. And um, one thing that was really surprising was we have uh, bagels. Mm -hmm. And there's a cinnamon and raisin bagel, which an American client said, why don't you add uh, a fried egg and Philadelphia cream cheese? And for an Australian, this was a shock. It's savory and it's a sweet bagel. And I thought, no, this is very American. But he's a really good friend, so he said, no, trust me, yeah. try it. And lo and behold, it was amazing. It's so good that it's the breakfast fix on our wow. breakfast menu. <laughs> so do you cook yourself here? In Pakistan, I mean, not here in the quality, of course. But. I think the chefs wouldn't allow me to cook yeah. in the kitchens. That's their domain, no, equally the bakers, that's their <laughs> domain. So they prefer, if I just, kind of give them some guidance on my recipes yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know I um, do all the food tasting as well oh, yeah. so I'll give right. them some recommendations and tips of how I think the food needs to be adjusted in terms of flavor and taste okay. but um, yeah I don't I don't tend to cook myself and uh, since I'm working around food most of the time and it's a 24 hour seven day a week okay. business I actually have stopped cooking at home. Oh wow, yeah. Much, much to my uh, shame, but... But it's understandable, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you have like a maid who comes and cooks something? Um, actually, uh, no, I don't have anyone to cook for me, but I have two restaurants. So Logology yes, exactly. and so a Chinese it. restaurant. So. Yeah. <laughs> I have professional cooks generally uh, and chefs cooking yeah. for me and, and the bakers obviously um, and then my husband is also a fabulous cook so he will also make uh, some pasta dishes so Italian pasta which he was oh, wow. taught uh, when he lived in Italy and then you know maybe I will do a few vegetarian dishes because we grow some uh, organic vegetables in our backyard garden as well. Yeah. Great. Um, so I'll make things like a spinach uh, pie, spinach and feta pie. Um, that's kind of one of my Australian dishes. Okay. And then some uh, cottage pie and, and things like that. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I tend to try and stay away from the kitchen and uh, get involved in other things. So you're Polish-Australian. You mentioned that you were actually born in Poland, but then you, you basically grew up in Australia, right? That's right, that's right. So my mother um, is Polish and uh, she met my father in London. So when I moved to London as a lawyer yeah. from Sydney, I moved to London and my mum thought, oh, this is, this is great. You know, Nicole will find a lovely Australian husband. They'll spend some time in London like I did and then they'll move back to Australia. <laughs> so instead... Not quite. <laughs> That's right, that's yeah. right. Instead, I found a lovely Pakistani husband mm. um, who then suggested I move to Pakistan and, and here I am uh, in Pakistan, which is a little bit une unexpected. Um, yeah. And certainly, you know, not what I ever thought yeah. I would yeah. be doing in my life. And I've spent right. so many years studying law and working in private practice that if someone had have said, you know what, you're going to create your own brand of cafe, bakery, yeah. um, you know, you're going to be an entrepreneur, you're going to start different businesses. I would have thought, you know what, you're you're high on something because that's not really <laughs> what I've done. Yeah. And I moved to London specifically to be a lawyer, to be a corporate lawyer, um, to enjoy that life. Um, and then, you know, life brings life you opportunity funny. and yeah. it changes and yeah. you find yourself in a country that opens you know, a different, a completely different uh, door in terms of 
you know, what you could do with your life and, you know, how you can contribute to society and make a difference and also meet different people. So as a lawyer, I would never have met the wide variety of people that I have, in, at, you know, so in Pakistan. But yeah, so you mentioned you are about to open a hotel here as well. Yes, so there's a 20-room boutique hotel above us uh, that I've renovated myself and, um, well, you know, project managed, renovated. And uh, it's about casual luxury and then the hotel guests can come and enjoy a lofology breakfast. That's amazing. Uh, and actually because uh, I completely gutted it and I've renovated it, I'm uh, getting some furniture design. So maybe you'd like to join me and visit one of the furniture makers who is undertaking part of the project with me. Yeah, I yeah. would love that. Okay, okay, let's go. Okay. Great. Okay, it's time to take a short break. See you soon. Welcome back from the break. We've reached Wood Heritage. So, Nicole, tell me a little bit about this place. Oh, okay. Well, Maya, this is actually a little gem in Islamabad that I found. Um, the guy who runs it actually sources furniture from all around Pakistan. So, mm. from the south in Multan and Sindh area up until the north, so Swat and those kind of regions. And then he re uh, renovates and he repurposes. Uh, the furniture. So for example, these would have originally been grain stores and he's repurposed them into furniture. Um, or for example, these are doors mm -hmm. and quite often people are getting these made into mirror frames or they're using them as tabletops. Yeah. So it's also a conversational piece and if you take it home then you know it's something striking and it's really beautiful and memorable from Pakistan from all different regions and it showcases uh, the amazing talent that you can find all around uh, Pakistan and you can see the different carvings uh, represent the different regions of the country. Wow. So you've traveled quite a bit in the country as well, right? Yes, I have. I actually got married in Pakistan, so I got married in Lahore, but then we took our honeymoon with a lot of friends down in Bahawalpur. Wow. So we toured all the mahals um, and we went into the desert to the fort, the Debar fort, mm -hmm. and then uh, we had a look at um, what is it, Multan, mm -hmm. um, and then also I've taken trips up to the north, so Hunza, Skardu, and that is just a piece of paradise. It's incredible. It's yeah. really, really beautiful. That's your favorite place? Yes, I think it's my favorite place. Is um, it because it's very different from Australia? It's, it's so different. The mountains are on a completely different scale to anything you've ever seen. You have these beautiful green valleys and you're in a t-shirt, sun, yeah. blue sky, and then you look up and there are these monstrous, huge, snow-capped mountains around you and you just feel the raw power of nature and it's it's beautiful. The people are super friendly and you just feel kind of at, at one with the raw nature. It's, it's really amazing. What's the most interesting place you've visited in Pakistan? Uh, I think maybe one of the most interesting would be uh, the Smuggler's Bazaar in Peshawar. Wow. So I drove with some friends uh, to Peshawar mm -hmm. and we decided we would go and check out this very, very famous Smuggler's Bazaar. And it's named the Smuggler's Bazaar because uh, Afghanistan doesn't have a port. Mm -hmm. So Karachi acts as the port, but there's no customs charge. So what they do is the goods come into Karachi and then they get trucked up to Afghanistan but yeah. then they're smuggled back right. into Pakistan. <laughs> so you can find some absolute gems. Uh, so for the hotel for example you could get uh, different fabrics, you can get tiles, uh, you can get different crockery and cutlery at really great prices um, and back in the day also you would get a lot of um, kind of smuggled ex-military 
right uh, you know camouflage gear yeah. knives all of that kind of stuff <laughs> so it's insane. fascinating and then also they had these uh, restaurants with, that served the local palau mm -hmm. so dumba palau which is this Oh, that, lamb. that funny, yeah. Yes, the lamb with, with the, the big butts. elliptical <laughs> backside. Yes, yes. Um, oh, wow. It's super tasty, yeah. and they just come out in these mounds of rice with mm. raisins and carrots. And right. it was, it was that amazing. That sounds a lot like a gobbly pulao, which yes. I had in Afghanistan. Yes, yes. Oh, wow. Yes, I understand. It's amazing. very similar. So this hotel that you're starting, um, is it aimed at like? foreigners coming to Pakistan or Pakistanis traveling in the country? So it's called the 108 Hotel and the idea is it's a boutique hotel so it'll cater to both tourists who are coming into Pakistan where we're hoping you know with the the change in visa policies that right. we'll get more tourists into mm -hmm. Pakistan but also the kind of corporate traveler who are coming through and wanting to stay in Islamabad and they want somewhere it's a bit casual luxury they can sit in the communal areas work so we have some really lovely um, views overlooking the Margala Hills mm -hmm. from some of the communal areas um, and so one of the ideas is to give people that home away from home feel that I feel that you can't really get in Islamabad at the yeah. moment. Okay. Um, and one of the reasons we're here today is actually to to see some of the furniture that I'm going to be installing in, in the hotel. But what do you think about the potential for tourism in Pakistan? Like, do you think there are still some obstacles or what, what do you think about it? So the government's made some really uh, positive uh, announcements to change the visa uh, yeah. policies and also in respect of NOC, so no objection certificates for foreigners traveling around the country. Yeah. And if they uh, get put into place, then I think the potential is pretty much unlimited and it's untapped in Pakistan because you know, not you know, not that long ago, the security situation wasn't that great. Exactly. So a lot of people didn't travel; they were scared yeah. to. Um, and I think they still are a little bit yes. because they they don't exactly know what the situation exactly. is like. But it's right? changed so much. Yeah. Um, you know, I've done a lot of traveling, and you know, I've been in shower, like I said, and yeah. the northern areas, and it, it's amazing. And you really feel so blessed to get that opportunity exactly. to go and experience it. Yeah. And I think if people are uh, you know feel that there's it's a little bit easier to get into the country and then to travel around then you know there's untapped potential yeah. people will definitely come and they'll really enjoy the hospitality and mm -hmm. also the beauty of the country yeah well that sounds great so let's go okay great yeah. oh, wow Isn't this beautiful I know right and look at this door yeah there's so Absolutely. much history in each of the pieces. Yeah. And it's all hand painted and hand worked. Do you have any idea which part of the country this one is from? This one, no, but this one is from Gilgit. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So I really like this one. It shows the age, yeah. and you also have the original paintwork coming on here. Right, like yeah. you can see the blue and red here. Yeah, this must, must be like ancient. I think so. <laughs> yeah. And look at old. this as well. It's like yeah. a window frame, I think, yeah. right? And you can put that into, you know, tabletops and exactly. um, also a mirror frame if you wanted. So lots yeah. of people do that. So there are lots of ideas that you have around. And then, you know, each frame has a different history and comes from a different part yeah. um, of, of Pakistan. So it depends what takes your fancy. Yeah. We can admire ourselves in the mirror here as well. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's go. Done. <laughs> Yeah, so wow. welcome to Wood Heritage. <laughs> and you've got the old capitals, and this is stuff that comes from all around Pakistan. This um, is incredible. And look at the beautiful columns, and each of them has its own history, and they come from uh, different types of wood as well. Yeah, wow. This is your stuff here? It is. So. Wow. Here we've got a screen that's from Multan mm -hmm. originally. And what I'm doing is getting it restored so that it's one of the screens that uh, features in the hotel reception. So you've got a little piece of, of history um, when you come in and it's also a focal point and it's also a talking point for guests. Yes. 
Amazing. Well, it looks like it's not quite finished yet, no, right? not quite <laughs> finished, but we want to keep that rustic look. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it will require a little bit more work. Maybe you're hungry, Maya? Yes, I'm getting a bit hungry. Um, you mentioned that you have another restaurant somewhere. I do. I know just the place. Yeah. I'm known also as the mother of dragons. Oh. So let me <laughs> take you to Dragon City. Okay. okay. Let's go. Let's go. All right, time to take a short break. See you soon. Welcome back. It's time to eat. Let's go. Wow, this is lovely. Thank you. I yeah. hope you're going to enjoy the food as well. Yeah, hopefully. So tell me a little bit about this place. So this is actually one of Islamabad's oldest Chinese restaurants. Really? And it was started back about 14, 15 years ago by my father-in-law, mm -hmm. uh, Mia Abdul Wahid, who was a politician, also an ambassador for Pakistan. And uh, he started this Chinese restaurant with a Chinese chef many years ago. And then uh, a few years ago, he wanted to retire. So I inherited Dragon City. So that's why I'm now known as the mother of dragons or the Khaleesi, which I don't mind. My husband calls me the Khaleesi. <laughs> and I mentor the little dragons here, the stuff. Do you personally like Chinese food? Yeah, I do. I really like Chinese food. Um, I think Chinese is a really interesting cuisine because it's very adaptable. So yeah. the Chinese you will eat in Australia is different to what you would have in London and it's different to what you would have in Pakistan. So it adapts to the local taste. That's very so true. we have kind of Pakistani Chinese. Yeah. So it's more Szechuan, a little bit more spicy. Um, but we find that, you know, it, it's very popular. I mean, the yeah. restaurant's been around a very long time. Um, we, we enjoy it. Yeah, great. And what do you think like is the most popular item on your menu here? Um, I think that we've got awesome dynamite prawns. The Kung Pao chicken is a absolute favorite with many, many people. Um, and then we have things like the beef chili dry, uh, which is super tasty and, and also very, very popular. Um, and then the fish dishes. So we have some joie fish and some dry fish and that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, so would you say it's more like a Pakistani version of Chinese food or? Yeah, I think it's more Pakistani. So it's uh, definitely adapted for the local tastes and yeah. here we are yeah. with the menus. Oh, thank you. Thanks very much. Wow. So we have a seasonal bowl menu, which is the latest rage, it seems, uh, in Pakistan. But what I would recommend is actually on our regular a la carte uh -huh. menu. I'm gonna let you do the ordering yeah, sure. because All right. I trust you on this okay. one. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let us get some dynamite prawns. Dynamite they prawns. are super wow. popular and they're delicious. That sounds amazing. That's my, one of my staples. Mm -hmm. um, and why don't we also get a beef chili dry? That's a very popular dish and a Kung Pao chicken. So. Pakistanis love Kung Pao chicken. It's one of our best-selling items as well. Um, and then also, which fish dish would you recommend? I will be recommend the Szechuan dry fish. Okay, so let's get the Szechuan dry fish and maybe some uh, stir-fried rice, vegetarian, and uh, chow mein. Maybe a, would you like chicken or vegetable? Up to you. <laughs> so I think we'll get a vegetable chow mein. <laughs> Thanks very much. And the drinks and water is okay. I think water is. I think water is okay. <laughs> Thank you. What do you? What would you say is the most popular dish on your menu? Like, what do Pakistanis like uh, about Chinese food? So Pakistanis love uh, spicy food. Yeah. So kung pao chicken is one of the very popular dishes and also the Manchurian, the sizzling dishes. Yeah, okay. um, They really love because that's got a bit of a kick and you can see it cooking and sizzling away in yeah, front yeah, of you. Yeah. So it's a little bit of an experience. Um, and also a new thing we have uh, on the menu, well, relatively new is the hot pot. 
So that again is cooked in front of you and you can choose um, you know, if you want prawns or you want meat and vegetarian and that's really quite fun so it's a bit of an event so you often get um, Chinese guests as well as foreigners as well as local who'll come and they'll have the hot pot here because you know, it, it's a huge hot pot. You can actually see the hot pots oh, over yeah, there yeah, wow. um, and so they light them and they cook them in front of you. That, that's actually what I was going to ask you about because now with this whole CPAC thing going on and more and more Chinese um, influence in Pakistan and there are a lot of Chinese people coming to Islamabad especially. Are you getting more like Chinese guests here in the restaurant We, we do get a few more um, Chinese guests in the restaurant, but I think that they tend to like their more authentic uh, Chinese rather than a, a Pakistani yeah. version. Yeah. The ones who do come, they come very, very regularly. Oh wow, thank you. Oh, this is so exciting. That looks absolutely amazing. So here we've got our dynamite prawns. Fantastic. Thank you. Wow. All right. Yeah, let's try some. Yeah. Bon appetit. Yeah. Okay. I'll let you as the guest break into the dynamite okay, prawns Okay, let's see what happens if I can. Okay. Not let the tower fall. Exactly. I'm so scared. <laughs> Yay. There Done you achieved. Go. Thank you. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, please. Oh my god, this is amazing. Yeah? I love it. Thank you. It's one of my favorites as well. Ah. So mm. yummy. <laughs> and for me also, eating with chopsticks makes the experience all the more authentic. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't eat with the chopsticks, I kind of feel like you could be almost eating any cuisine. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I like the added Absolutely. Uh, aspect, yeah. Ooh. Wow. That was quick. All right. <laughs> so it seems we've got our fish here. do you say your life here in Pakistan, I mean, how different is it from what your life was back in the West? Um, so to the extent that you know, I run my own business, it's pretty different because I get to you know, work my own hours and fix my own timetable. Mm. Um, but I pretty much do what I did overseas. I'm, I'm very independent. I drive my own car. I drive between the cities, so between Lahore, Islamabad, I've driven to Peshawar. Um, you know, I, I run businesses and I um, travel, work with my husband. So, I mean, fairly, fairly similar. Um, I guess the one difference would be that I wouldn't wear dresses and skirts of that course. show Your bare legs. legs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is kind of the one thing that stands out and maybe, you know, also you walk a little bit less yeah. in Pakistan. So, you know, we'll go walking in the park, for example, or we'll go to the Margalas and go walking there. Yeah. Um, whereas there's a lot less city walking, which you might experience, say, in a place like exactly. London or yeah. Sydney or Everybody's somewhere like that. Everybody's always in a car here, exactly. right? Yeah. Exactly, <laughs> that's right, that's right. But I love driving here, so. Yeah. But yeah, should we try Let's, some of this food? Yes, please, please. So excited. This so looks this one amazing. is the one that's very, very popular. Uh -huh, um, yeah. And actually, this one looks amazing. So this is our uh, Szechuan dry fish. Yeah. And beef chili dry is one of my husband's absolute favorites. Okay. So let's get in to us. Yeah? And one of my favorite things I'd have to say uh, to do in Pakistan is actually to get an Ayurvedic hot hair massage. Oh wow, which where do is you get that? amazing. So there's a place in F7 in Islamabad called Neem Tree okay. and they do hot oil and also protein treatments. And it's this traditional South Asian head massage that just transports you somewhere else. Yeah. And that's my ultimate luxury for, it's kind of a treat that I give myself. Oh, I need and, to um, get that done. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Something you don't get overseas. 
and yeah. I think it's amazing. I, my mum got hooked on them, so we were having them every week when she comes to visit. So I actually wanted to ask you about um, if your friends and family have been here visiting you, yeah? So they, have, they have, they yeah. have. So back in 2013 when I got married, um, I had a whole group of friends and family come and yeah. visit me and they not only got uh, tutorials in Lollywood dancing, so oh, wow. it's Lahore wedding, Bollywood, yeah. <laughs> um, then they got you know to see sightsee and we travelled around Bahalpur. Um, and then my mum has come and visited me a number of times and she actually helped me set up Lofology. So she was working with me, helping serve bread and talking to customers and engaging them. Wow. Um, so she's been about four times. Yeah. And uh, how did she like it? She, she really likes it. Um, yeah. And she's surprised at how similar life in Islamabad is compared to, for example, life in Canberra. Really? Uh, yeah, because wow. you've got big wide streets, it's green, There's it's ringed by mountains. That's true, yeah. It's, it's kind of a sleepy place. Yeah. So yeah, it's very, very similar. Yeah, so she's not that worried about you living here anymore, right? No, no, that's right, that's right. It's not what she expected, yeah. um, but she was pleasantly surprised. Ooh. And also, you know, it helps that um, my husband's family supports me and supports the businesses and what I do so she can see that I'm also really happy here. Yeah. Um, and we have a really great relationship with that's the extended great. family. What, what was your family's initial reaction when you told them that you were going to move to Pakistan? <laughs> so when I was in uh, London, my mom had actually met my father mm -hmm. um, in London and she thought, oh, Nicole will go and, you know, work uh, and live in London and she'll find a nice Australian husband. Yes. She didn't kind of expect that I would uh, turn up with a Pakistani yeah. and so she was a little bit surprised but then you know when she'd met Zaf and the family so I had a big Pakistani wedding and it yeah. was a three-day extravaganza under the stars very colorful and it was amazing and not how I envisaged my wedding yeah. you know at all exactly um, but it was amazing. Wow. We had a big um, mendi in the garden. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned my foreigner friends got taught how to lollywood bollywood dance. And we had a dance off between the locals and the foreigners. Oh, yeah, I like to that think so that we won, but obviously, you know, my husband and his friends and family thought that they won. So <laughs> it's a little bit of a controversy. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. And that must have been a really interesting experience for your friends and your family to be able to come to Pakistan and see this like whole traditional wedding and, and the entire culture and, and then also to get to see like what you're marrying into. Yes, basically. yes, exactly. <laughs> and actually some of them, so uh, they'd come from England and the ones who couldn't make it, they said to the friends who were going, are you crazy? Like it's so dangerous. And, yeah. You know, Nicole's just thrown away her life and her career. Oh, wow. And my friends had to say, you know, you haven't been, you didn't see, and it's amazing. And she's got a good thing going oh, on. Yeah. And, you know, can make her own life now and, and takes the opportunity to change what she was doing. So I didn't have to become a lawyer again yeah. and keep working in law. I could do something completely different. Mm. So they explained that and then they said, you know, not only that it was super colorful, they got Mendy done, they learned yeah, these dances, yeah. they did lots of sightseeing. Mm. And of course, you know, being a foreigner sightseeing, especially in Lahore, they were treated like celebrities. Of so, course, yeah. You know, there were queues of people who wanted to shake their hand, welcome yeah. them to the country, and you know, the usual Pakistani thing that people are so hospitable, they'll invite you for tea or to their place for dinner, or Absolutely. please meet my mum, please meet my sister, and you know, all of that kind of yeah. stuff. So, they had a really, really lovely experience, mm, actually. That's great. And so you mentioned the security situation a little bit, but of course that was that was a bit different in 2013 mm -hmm. still. Have you ever, um, let's say, had a, some kind of a security-related incident happen to you in Pakistan, or have you ever felt like threatened in the country in any way? I personally haven't, mm. but I um, also um, drive my own car, mm. so I don't use public transport. I know yeah. that um, you know, people stare a lot yeah. and usually it's the men who are staring and they kind of think that if you're walking on the street alone, it's an invitation yeah. to come and approach you, to come yeah. and talk to you, which it's not, obviously. Yeah, exactly. um, but, you know, no one's ever 
harassed me. Yeah, um, exactly. Me personally. Yeah, I mean, of course so it happens. It does happen, it, yeah. 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 But as long as you're prepared to be stared at, yeah. then, I mean, that it's fine. So I'm kind of used to that. And then, um, you know, people coming up and wanting to take your photo. Mm. If it's just groups of young men, that can be a bit awkward. Yeah. But when it's families and quite often, you know, young children will say, oh, you know, are you a princess or are you a fairy? And you're like, well, I can be if you would like me to be. And then their parents are like, could you please take a photo? That would make their day. And so that's really sweet. And I mean, no one's going to ask you that in London or Sydney. Right, exactly. Right? Because we're just normal people. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, we're nothing special. <laughs> Whereas here, you know, you're something very, very special. Um, and that's really nice, you know? It's nice, yeah. And it's like, it shows that people are really excited about the fact that more foreigners are coming mm -hmm. to Pakistan. And it's, it's still quite rare, I think, for them to see. Exactly. I think more so in Lahore, because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are less tourists there and less foreigners. In yeah. Islamabad, not so much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean generally, no, I don't feel, and I, I actually feel safer on the streets here in terms of crime because we have a really low crime rate, so yeah. street crime, mm -hmm. than say other major cities. Um, so I've, you know, never had any kind of incident like that. Interesting. Well, that was really amazing. I'm really glad you enjoyed the food. Hope to see you back here. Absolutely. <laughs>